Dear friends, grace, peace, and mercy be yours this morning and always from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we did last week, we're looking a little bit deeper into the Colossians passage for this morning. Our text is from Colossians chapter 3, focusing in on verses 2 and 3. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. I wonder if the name Shelley Pennefather is familiar to any of you. If you're a women's basketball follower, I'm not, but if you're a follower of women's basketball, you probably know that name. And ESPN recently had a special on her. Very interesting story. I, I didn't remember it until, I had, really, I didn't remember her name at all. Vaguely familiar. Star athlete basketball player for the University of Connecticut women's basketball team. She was coached by the same coach that's still there. And how many championships does he have now? I don't know. I mean, 30 or something. It's crazy. Anyway, she was a star before the WNBA. So she played there and then went on to play for a year in Japan. But she was a deeply, deeply devout Roman Catholic girl. And to the surprise of everybody in her family, in 1991, she left everything behind and joined, I think it's the Poor Sisters of Clare Monastery. Um, it, it, it's, it's a group of Catholic nuns, the most austere, the most the strictest, the, the most devout group of nuns in the world. They give up everything. She gave up everything to be a member of this cloister. They can't wear shoes. They eat one meal a day. They're allowed to sleep, I think, for no more than four hours at a time. And the worst thing, the worst thing, if you will, if you will, the worst thing, you cannot have any physical contact with your loved ones, period. Except for once on the 25th anniversary of you taking your vows, you're allowed to have a special service in the chapel there at the, at the monastery where she lives, where she gets to hug her family for a brief period of time and then she won't be able to do it again for another 25 years. And in ESPN they showed this. They showed her getting to see her mom for the first time in 25 years. Her sisters and brothers, nephews and nieces that she didn't know that she had for the first time and seeing them walk up to her dressed in her garments, her nun garments, and get a hug and share about 10 seconds of time together and say they loved each other and everything and then the next person in line would come. Her mom hugged her knowing it would be the last time she hugged her little girl because her mom's 75 or 80 years old. Unbelievable. Very, very touching. And as I thought about this and I thought about how I felt about her doing this, I thought about our readings for this morning. Specifically about what we're told in Colossians 3, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Made me think about Solomon and what Solomon went through, what he writes about in our Old Testament reading. King Solomon, fascinating, fascinating account. You know this, the story of Solomon. He was told by God he could have anything he wanted. Anything. And as a young man of faith, he chose wisdom. Wisdom meaning knowledge of God and being able to discern the will of God and teach people about God and all of those things. And God said, because you have chosen that, not only will I make you the most wise person that's ever lived, I will give you all the other stuff too. But you know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. He couldn't handle the other stuff. Couldn't handle it. He became the, the Bill Gates of that time period, one of the richest men in the world, if not the richest man in the world. And it led him astray. It led him into a pursuit of worldliness, a pursuit of passion, a pursuit of lust and earthly treasures and all those things that got him into so much trouble 
and led him away from the Lord. And in what appears to be an account after he was brought back to faith, Solomon tells us very clearly, all that stuff was meaningless. All that stuff is vanity. All that stuff is a waste of your time. It leads you away from God, not to Him. It's worth nothing. And he makes the point over and over again. Toil for all that thinking it's important and you're going to die anyway and leave it to who knows who. Chase after the things that are important. I just lost the mic again. For those who aren't visitors and haven't been here for a while, we've been having mic problems and I don't know what the, the deal is. So when it goes out, I'll try to speak louder. Vanity of vanities. Everything is vanity. Even the microphone system. Okay. But Solomon tells us this. He warns, he warns against the problem of chasing after worldly things. And he struggled terribly because of that period of time in his life. It also made me think, as I was thinking about Shelley and what she did in, in joining the monastery, it made me think of the rich fool in our gospel reading for this morning. Now think of his predicament. <coughs> he chased after worldly things too. Unlike Solomon, though, he wasn't given the chance to know that they were vanity of vanities, that he was chasing after the wind, that it didn't matter. He went to bed one day, in the parable Jesus tells, the account Jesus tells, he went to bed one day thinking he had everything because, because he had his bins full of grain, and that day it was the equivalent of having your 401k full and your CDs full and all the cash on hand you wanted and all that stuff and a fancy house in the lake and a brand new car, a brand new truck, brand new fishing boat behind it, all that. It was the equivalent of having all that stuff. He went to bed thinking, ah, oh, it's all good. I've worked so hard. I have all this. I'm going to now just relax and enjoy it and sit back. And that very night, Jesus says, the Lord tells him his soul was demanded of, it, of him. He died, and everything he had worked hard for was left to who knows who. Everything was vanity. Now, both of these men, Solomon and the rich fool, had something in common. They were a little different though. One thing we learn from them is they teach us that chasing after all these things in life is vanity of vanities. The temptations are so great, aren't they? They really are. And we're so good at justifying our chasing after them. Temptations are all around us. Temptations to have more. We live in such a wealthy, prosperous country that we still hear, especially during the silly season, the political season, about how some people don't have enough and other people have way too much and it's not fair for those who don't have as much and it's selfish of the ones that have too much and it's all about chasing after the vanities. Vanity of vanities. There's always the temptation to fall into that trap. But there's another temptation on the flip side of it. And that's why I talked about Sister Penafather, Shelley Penafather. I don't know what you thought my take on her story was, or if I was speaking favorably about her and what she did. I certainly don't want to speak ill of her, but there's a second temptation that we learn about from our readings for this morning, especially when we're told by our Lord through St. Paul, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. There's also the temptation to think that to be a good godly person, I have to hate stuff. Or I have to not want to have anything. Or I have to be super austere and give everything I have to the poor all the time. And walk around in bare feet. And never hug my family. And give up everything I own and pray 25 times a day, not 26, not 27, not 24, but 25, and sleep only four hours a day. There's that flip side of the same problem, isn't there? To focus so much on the material stuff, you think you're more godly because you're giving it away, or giving it up, 
or doing without it more than other people. But that's not the lesson we learn from this. Neither of these things are how we should look at stuff in this world. We certainly shouldn't be greedy. And by the way, I think it's important to remember, it's not just rich people who are greedy. Right? You hear that a lot. It's not just rich people. Everybody's greedy. Okay? Greed is not how we should look at things in this material world. And we also shouldn't look at things as if the good gifts God gives us are to be thrown away and disregarded and not appreciated. We learn a very valuable lesson as Christians from the reading for this morning, from all of the readings. We learn to set our minds on things above. What does that mean? We talked a little bit about what it doesn't mean, obviously. What does it mean to set your mind on things above? If it doesn't mean doing what Sister Pettifather does, and I don't think it really does. I, I don't think she's any more a better example of truly following this passage than Solomon was, or the rich ruler was, the rich young fool was. What does Jesus mean when he tells us through St. Paul, set your mind on things above? What he means is, set our minds on him. Set our minds, first and foremost, on Jesus Christ and who He is for us. Wherever you're at in life, and whatever you do, whatever vocation you fill, whatever job, calling you are called to, whatever it is, set your mind and your heart and your life on Him. On Him who became human, as we learned last week in the reading from Colossians 2, on Him who, in His flesh, the very fullness of the deity lived completely, fully, totally, totally God, totally man. Set your minds and hearts and lives on Him who came to be for you what you could never be in and of yourself. A person who lives rightly and thinks rightly and acts rightly and desires rightly. <clears throat> Set your mind on Him who came to be your substitute, <clears throat> living the perfect life you never could, and out of love for you, out of His love to make you His own dear children, died in your place on the cross and rose again to life on the third day so you would know real life, forgiveness, and salvation. Set your minds on Jesus. That's what St. Paul means when he says, says, set your mind on things above, not on worldly things. Don't be greedy and don't focus too much on earthly things, but also don't think none of those things matter anyway and that they aren't gifts from God. Use everything rightly and focus your attention on Him. And be thankful for everything He gives you. See, here's our problem as human beings is we're told that our lives are hidden. <coughs> our lives are hidden with Christ in God and our fallen nature doesn't like that. Our fallen nature wants to focus on the things that we can touch. The bass boat sitting across the, sh the street or the new car that somebody's driving or the better job or the family without problems and struggles or the more money in the bank, or the more the status in society, the, the ability to have more than others, whatever it is. Our fallen nature wants to focus on those things. You see, St. Paul isn't really talking about whether you're rich or poor, whether you have too much or too little. He's talking about us making idols out of things in our lives. And we can make anything, anything an idol can be our children, can be our health, can certainly be our pocketbooks, it can be our marriage, it can be anything. That's why we're told by the Lord, set your mind on Him. Focus on Jesus. Focus on the things that are eternal and hidden with Him forever and will be revealed one day when we're with Him. 
forever. And everybody always wants to know practical stuff. Like this, this is very theoretical, Pastor. Very, very <coughs> interesting and important. But how does it apply to my life now? How do I do this? How do I set my mind and heart and life on things above, on Jesus? Well, we're following in our Colossians reading, and we learned how to do that last week, remember? We died and rose again with Christ, where? In holy baptism. That's where our new life began. That's when our old life and all our life was put away, and our new life in Christ became hidden with Him. So every day, whether it's a beautiful day like today and you're going to go out and enjoy Taste of Dorset and all the wonderful things that God has given you to eat and enjoy in this beautiful day, or whether it's a terrible day and you're struggling with anxiety and hurt over things that are going wrong in your life, every day, wake up and remember your baptism. Every day, spend a little time meditating on Jesus and who He is for you. Every day realize that though your life might be hidden underneath some of these things, don't focus too much on the things you can see. Focus on what's eternally important and what He promises you. And let that be your joy. No matter what, let that be your joy. As you enjoy the things God gives you and as you go through the difficult times of this life. Set your, thing, your mind and heart and life on things above. On Jesus, crucified and risen for you. And that will be your joy throughout everything. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.